Hello and welcome. Thanks for watching this Microsoft Intune video. This is Intune Role Scope Groups, video 3 of 5 of the Intune Role Administration. Let's start out Let's start out by reviewing the role and role assignment. In this case, our role, named the Desktop Administrator, has three different resources associated with it, compliance policies, configuration profiles, and mobile apps. And each of those resources have a set of permissions, create, read, update, delete, and assign in the case of our mobile apps. There is an associated role assignment called Seattle, and it has member group, Seattle IT Department, and scope group, Seattle End Users. We'll use these examples as we go along further. Now, scope groups matter because scope groups limit which users or devices your administrators can assign policies, profiles, or applications to. And it limits which users or devices your administrators can perform remote tasks on. Scope groups actually have no effect on whether or not those administrators can read, create, update, or delete any of the resources for which they've been granted permissions in that role. So let's see exactly how this works. If I go back to our role and role assignment, for mobile apps or configuration profiles or compliance policies where these permissions exist, our members, in this case the Seattle IT department, can read, update, or delete, or create mobile apps. However, for the assigned permission, Seattle IT department members can only assign applications to the Seattle end users. So, what you should do is first pick scope groups from the top of your security group hierarchy. You should also ensure that you're always picking the most appropriate scope group for a given role assignment. And you'll need to pick scope groups in certain special cases that might be different. Let's start at the top. Here I've got Contoso represented with a whole bunch of employees that are worldwide. I have an IT department, which is a set of three users. I have a Seattle end users group. I have a Chicago end users group. And I have a Dallas end users group. Now, in order to ensure we're selecting the right scope group for our US IT department, remember I said we're going to start, start at the top of our hierarchy of security groups. Now, in this case, Seattle, Chicago, and Dallas are all lower in our hierarchy of security groups than Contoso employees. So when anyone in the US IT department is assigning applications or performing remote tasks, they can perform that with any members of the US employees security group. But more importantly, they can also select any of the child security groups. So if you wanted to create an application assignment and only target that Dallas end users, you could do that by only having selected the Contoso US employees scope group. So remember, always start at the, tarp, the top of your hierarchy. Now let's say that you have a Seattle IT department. So here we have our Contoso all employees, but we want to ensure that our Seattle IT department is only managing the Seattle employees. I have another nested security group called Contoso US Employees. And within that, I have Seattle End Users and Seattle IT Department. Now, because Contoso is worldwide, I also have Paris End Users and a Paris IT Department. For this purpose, though, we're going to ensure that the Seattle IT Department has a role assignment that only contains Seattle End Users as its scope group. That ensures that Seattle IT members can only assign and perform remote tasks against Seattle end users. Let's talk last about the special cases. Scope groups are not used 
when your administrators are only assigned a read-only role. Because remember, scope groups only apply for the assign and remote tasks actions. If your administrators don't assign any profiles, policies, or applications, scope groups are not used. Or if your administrators don't perform any remote tasks on users or devices, scope groups are not used. So in these cases, you should use the same security group as your scope group as what you had selected for your member group. Thanks for watching this video and I hope this helps as you use Intune's role-based access control.